Hello everyone, Warrantel here, and welcome back to Lustria, where we are playing as the Bretonian colony of Brigon. Now, before I get started with today's episode, there is two things I want to talk to you guys about. Firstly, a quick apology for the lateness of this episode. After the shenanigans of trying to record the final episode for the Tao Sing campaign yesterday, I just wasn't in the mood to record this episode, so I thought I would just leave it until today instead and come back to it a bit afresh. So that's exactly what I've done, so apologies for that. The second thing I did want to bring up though is what I want to do with this campaign after today, because I talked about it in my other campaigns for Warhammer 2 and I think I mentioned about it in a previous episode for this. But with the new DLC that, well, at this moment in time hasn't come out yet, but it will come out later today, the, you know, the Warden and the Polch, I wanted to finish off all the Warhammer 2 campaigns I had going. Now I've done that with the Tal Sin one and I've done it with the Grudgebringers earlier today, but after giving us some thoughts, I would like, if I can, to actually continue this campaign because I'm quite enjoying it. It's sufficiently small scale and that we're just focusing on Lustria that we can do exactly that and not drag it out too long. And with the editing and that I'm doing, I'm, I'm quite enjoying it. So what I've decided to do is, because I want to take a few days off just to sort of recharge my batteries a bit from recording and that, I'm going to be shifting it so next week will be the next episode. And what I'm going to do, instead of uploading this the same day as another video, I'm just going to make it be the only videos for those days. So on Wednesdays and Saturdays now, this campaign will be uploaded. And only this campaign, for the mo at least for the moment. I realise that as great as it is to try and fit more episodes in in a day, it's only suitable really for me with my sort of lifestyle, you could say, since the lockdown's in place. Once it kicks back in and I'm back to work, it's not going to be any good to be honest it's going to be hard to keep it up but that's the plan anyway guys so this will be the final episode this week with the next episode coming out on wednesday and then it will be every wednesday and saturday by itself so i hope that's cleared things up and makes sense to you guys but anyway with that said let's get on with today's episode now we left things last time if you remember with Skeggy declaring war on us, but they haven't exactly done much. They burned down my southern settlement of Chakra, but that's about it. So what we've done instead is took the offensive, and as you can see we've taken Swamp Town, Hexato, and Port Weaver finally. Now the thing is, we need a bit of a priority list, because we've got numerous enemies right now to deal with. Not only do we have Skeggy up here, but we've got the Blue Vipers down here. We've got numerous rebels popping up here and there. And I noticed before I started recording down here, Rosovo, how do you pronounce it? Zlanhuapek? If I've probably butchered the pronunciation. But these guys have brought an army right up to Rosovo. Now we do have a garrison here with walls and everything, so it should be a tough fight for them. But I would like to try and recruit a couple of extra units here if possible, just to help the battle a bit more in my favour. But we'll come back to Rosovo shortly. What I want to do is talk about the, the priority target list. Target priority list? That makes more sense, doesn't it? So this was actually suggested in the comment section of the last video, and I agree completely. I think it's a fantastic idea. So what we're going to do is eventually build up a second army. But our main army here, led by Marcel, is going to first of all finish off Skeggy. So we're going to go after their capital next, and then head up to the Secret of Dawn and the Monolith of Fallen Gods. We're then going to clear up these any armies around here, as well as deal with any armies left, and push down then to deal with the Blue Vipers down here with the Floating Pyramid and Spectazuma. Once those are done, assuming nothing else has popped up, my next target will be going after the Skaven of Clan Null, I think they were called, now, because they, I presume, have got all these territories which are ruins here. Yeah, you can see the Warp Stone down here, can't you? So we will conquer all this territory up to the Fallen Gates. This will give us a nice border then with the Dark Elves, so we can focus our attentions then on Lustria proper. So we can head back down here, and what I'm thinking at the moment is to go after Zw Zwalapek and make our way to the coast. Don't know what's happened here, looks like the Awakened are still around. That's okay. 
And then we can push down then and see about basically conquering south. Once we take Illustria, that's the campaign done. But I think that's a good list of way priorities for what we're going to be doing now. So now that I've actually talked for about five minutes and actually not done any gameplay, Blessings let's get started with attacking Skeggy. I actually feel a little bit bad after what I was saying in the last episode where I said how Blessings effective the garrisons are. Because they do have things like feral mammoths and stuff. But then it just feels I'm lying to you guys when I see the auto resolve bar like this. So we're going to go and do that. Wow, you guys took a few casualties. And you guys did too. But yeah, you can see I've actually recruited the Holy Wardens. I thought it would bulk up the line a bit more. But we'll take that. Occupy. And that's given us a bit more cash and a Dragon Bane gem. Let's skip through that. Right. Now I would like to see about building a tavern or something like that. But what I want to do really is if we head back down to Rosovo. What do we have as a garrison here? Remind me game. It's actually pretty good. We've got a trebuchet, a couple of knights, quite a few archers and men at arms, quite a lot of foot squires and a paladin. The only thing is, I don't know what they've got apart from these. Okay. What I'm thinking is we can recruit a lord, right? Now, Esteban is available, but I can't remember for the life of me if he has the Knight's Vow, because that would be a factor to consider. But I'll tell you what, we'll recruit you for the moment. Alright, let's have a quick look. You do not. Okay. And then it doesn't matter. Let's just give you... Pledge to Chivalry. So we're going to stick you inside here. Now, basically he's just there to provide some extra support to the garrison. But the thing is, if we try to recruit any units, because we have to wait two turns on average for them, they're easily going to attack us on the next turn, which means we won't be able to finish our recruitment. But... We do have regiments of renown and we have a few supply units we can have spawn in straight away. The only problem is, is, you can see, because we don't have the Knight's Vow, it's going to cost us a lot in upkeep. But I think it's going to be worth it, just to give us a bit of extra support. So what I'm going to do is actually recruit two new units of Knight Errants. We could get Knights of the Realm instead, in fact. I mean, we could get all three. But that's going to cost me a lot of money. We'll be into the negative of that. Uh, now we'll just go for the two units of Knights Everts instead. There we go. That should hopefully help things out a little bit over there. And we're still in the positive. So if we go back to Skeggy a minute. Let's get that tavern built. There we go. Um, I wouldn't mind getting a Grail Shrine built. But I still want to save up a bit so we can get it at Rosovo. Just so we can keep our core territory under control a bit. Otherwise, anything else we can do? We can try... I haven't got enough money to upgrade that. We could upgrade this. I don't want to upgrade this because we know that Grax was somewhere around here. Grax Beast Basher. And I don't want to spend money on something that will potentially just be ruined then if he attacks it. So yeah, we'll leave that. And instead... Let's just save it for the turn instead. Right. We need to pop over here to upgrades quick. So, Marcel... Oh, you can get your Hippogriff now. Got it. Fantastic. Alright, so Hector... I'm going to give you a Pegasus. And then as for a Commandment for Skeggy, I'm going to give you... I'm going to give you Ven Venerate the Lady. It will reduce the Chaos Corruption nearby, and it will give us a bit more control. So that will help things out. And that's it then. Our next target will be the Ziggurat of Dawn. Okay, here they come. They've laid siege to it as planned. Gives us a chance at least to see what they've got in terms of armies. Because I just noticed, going by the symbol around their banner, I don't think they've actually got much troops there. Ugh, that looks horrible. Got Chaos Warriors turning up, Beastmen turning up. Ugh. Right, let's go through these. 
And yeah, I just saw the one about Quack. I can see he's up here in the Monument of the Moon. Let's have a look. Actually, if I ask you to attack... Right, they got a whole bunch of skinks, two units of cop riders, a bunch of source warriors, experienced warriors as well, two units of temple guard, right. That would be a bit of a tough army to fight in the battle open field. So yeah, you guys can come and attack us on the walls by all means. Right, why don't you guys do that then? Let's continue. In fact, let's make a slight detour. Let's pop up to here so we can pick up the Skull Reef. The army will probably be an easy fight for us. Yeah, that's an easy fight for us. Okay, you guys took more losses. Ugh, right. But there we go. Some bonus now for Chivalry. 20,000 gold of Forbidden Wards. Okay. And we're still getting a bit of replenishment. That's cool. Um, is it because we're in contestant territory? It is. We're just going to have to be careful with the Foot Squires and with the Holy Wardens. I don't want to lose the Foot Squires. They've been with us for quite some time now. And while we can get the Horde Holy Wardens back eventually, it's just going to be extra money for us. And I'd rather try and keep them alive if possible. So, we'll keep them around. I might fight the next battle myself, though. Alright, for you... Spiron Knight, Lady's Mantle. Let's give you... Treasures of the Old Ones. Just so we can have a better chance of picking up more magic. And then for Antone... Let's give you... Let's give you a more devastating charge, I think will be useful. Or better yet, actually. Let's continue training up my troops. It might not have been a much, but it adds up over time. Alright, then, with the 24,000 that we've currently got... I would like to actually upgrade Rossover eventually, but for now, we'll upgrade this so we have the walls. Can upgrade... Do I want to upgrade this or upgrade this? Let's upgrade that. We could do the same for the iron mine, but to be honest, it's not that big a deal. Instead, let's upgrade you here. And what else do we want to try and get? Let's get some more defenses as well for here. And I'll save the rest then for Wasabo when we eventually sort out what's happening there. In fact, let's just grab you guys and ask you to reprioritize to go up against them. Because they've been brought into the war because of us. So that should hopefully work out. And then you guys have been upgraded. That's going to be done. Hixotl. What do I want to do with Hixotl? I kind of feel tempted just to leave it right now. Once we dealt with all of these, then we can consider keeping it. But for now, let's just um, leave it. If it gets, just, you know, if it gets taken, it gets taken. Alright, but there we go. Let's end the turn once more. Okay, here comes Quack. Now, I reckon we were going to lose this anyway, so we'll all just resolve it. Let him take it. And then we can easily come back in and take it back once we've dealt with Skeggy. Now, what are you guys doing? Huh. I personally would have gone there myself. You can see that they're taking attrition right now. Not a lot, but it's all going to add up. Ooh. Gotrek and Felix are about. Where are they? Oh, they're actually up here if we wanted to recruit them. Hmm. That could come in handy. Alright. In the meantime, let's make our way over towards here. Oh, I hate it when that happens. You know, when you're literally so close to it, you can almost tap it with your beak. But can't do it. Alright, Lorenzo, why have I got you? Okay, he is actually a pretty good character. Might just get him to start making his way down here. Alright, and then we'll just wait and see what happens with these guys. 
they did send off their hero, who's actually the Eternity Warden. He's a le legendary hero that was created by Mixu for Hexatol. And since Hexatol got conquered, it looks like he joined them instead. But that was pretty cool to see. Um, what are we going to have next? Improved agricultural technology or probably go down for streamstresses. Reduce recruitment costs, increase in our local recruitment capacity, and the 15% bonus as well. That's going to help us... Oh my god, we got two golds. What happened? We have much more than that, surely, and we haven't recruited any new units. Okay. Um, never mind then. Right, yeah, Esteban's fine there. You can do that. Right, continue. What does the Empire want? They want me to join their war against the cult of Zotek. No. I've already got too many enemies to deal with right now. I want to deal with the ones I've got before I try and bring any more on. Oh. I had just noticed, Skeggy have got the Saddaman up there, don't they? From when they defeated the Drowned? You know, um... So, uh, what's the name? Celestria Delaphine's faction. So I'll have to make sure to sail over there and deal with them as well at some point. Now as for you, Knuts. Don't think you're going to work out too well if you try to attack my settlements. Uh, you guys are laying siege. That's fine. If we lose Hexartal, we lose Hexartal. Right, skip through all of this. Where's that? Oh, really? We're going to have another rebellion taking place. Although that's good. Teto Echo. Wait a minute. Oh. I couldn't tell. Hang on. Yeah, they've changed. It was a Slam Mage Priest originally doing it. But now they've got Teti Echo instead. This is the legendary lord for Zoanapek, if I remember right. And he's um, a well known character in the, for Lizard Men. So it's kind of cool to see him, but you know also a bit surprising to. Well, see him. Uh, right, auto resolve. Oh, that was close. That was close. And there's me saying I was going to fight the battle, thinking about it. Right, we're going to take it. Okay, Ruin's End. Dark, corrupt, and evil forces have no place here. So Marcel's got a plus three leadership for his entire army. Cool. Right. When do we build this, the Beacon of Dawn? That's going to be handy to clear out the chaos corruption in the area, because you can see, even with our bonus, it's still at 84%. Skaven's going up as well, thanks to that priest of saw. Right, let's leave you here for the minute, and I'm going to focus on just giving you defences. We will be sailing over an into Grey Rock Point, so we'll probably just burn it down. Rather than keep it, it is an inhabitable climate. It'd just be too much hassle to keep hold of it. But, we'll let you guys rest up for the moment. Marcel, we're going to give you the Knight's Virtue. I want to try and get the Baron of Brigand one eventually, because you can see here, it provides a bunch of bonuses. Farms get income, all provinces, local growth for the province, all provinces get cheaper farm buildings, and we get better casualty replenishments for our lords. So he will get better health and regeneration, basically. So that would be cool. Uh, how many turns is it going to take? Four turns. Well, to be honest, we're going to be doing a lot more than... We need more than that soon. Can't recruit anything more though. Okay. Uh, next, Sir Ector. Let's give you. Woundmaker. Oh, my bad. I should have gave him the charge bonus, shouldn't I? Okay, let's give Antone Devastating Charge as well. And hit and turn. Lorenzo is not going to be doing much. I might get him to attack the uh, Zuadpak army just to try and do some casualties. And hopefully, though, the Hunt Marshal's expedition is going to be heading down. It did say that they were sending troops, so hopefully it's soon rather than later. Okay, that actually looks kind of promising. Just. And then he goes in the complete wrong direction. You sought. 
<laughs> okay. There's starting the assault. Right, we're gonna fight this. So, see you guys on the battlefield. Lightning guys, here we are. I have to say, it's been quite some time since I fought a defensive siege battle. So, this is gonna be interesting. Right, few troops there. We've got two towers over here. Source warriors, okay, okay. And then what we've got over here, battling ram or two? Two battling rams. Okay, that was a bit pointless, having two of them. Alright, but how are we going to set this up? Well... The plan will be to basically try and defend the central courtyard. So we will be deploying spearmen and that across here basically and here to hold the line. But we might as well take advantage of securing the towers in order to be able to do some early damage to them. They will get in, there's no denying that, right? Even with the towers firing and that and our trebuchets, I don't think we're going to do enough damage to knock them out. And even then, they can just climb up the walls, right? So what I'm going to do is set up the trebuchets so they can actually attack over there. Just move you a little bit closer, I guess, so you can actually get the range. We're going to have everybody on def guard modes with the exception of our cavalry. Got four units of cav, that's pretty good. And Esteban as well. Esteban is going to be here in the center. And then what we're going to do, what we're going to do, we can defend this point here, and we can defend this point here, sort of. Yeah, that's impossible to rain. Or we can just deploy along here. No, we'll do here. Smaller choke points. So if we set that up with that in mind, let's grab... Let's grab you three. We'll put you guys actually over this way. Just because it gets in my head better then. That this is the left side and this is the right side. But we'll get you guys to come on here. Are right, you ready to hold the line? We'll have two foot squares on each side as well. Are right, you ready to do that? The knights are going to be all together. And their job is basically to try and break through on one flank. And really just start doing rear charges and all sorts. Would it be best to come this side or this side? Let's go this side. That might be better. So we'll get you guys ready here. Archers then I'm going to put up on the walls. Their job is to basically activate the towers, do some early damage, and then they're going to make their way back inside the settlement. So once I can actually get you collected. Paladin, you can head back in here actually. Right. You make sure you've got this gate one secured. Ah, uh, you can come here. Ready to fire. Right, you guys can come over here. Then you guys can stay here. No better yet, come here. So you can activate this one. Then ready. you guys come here. See if you can ideally be in a position to activate. Maybe not, okay. Has anybody fire. not been put it on a tower yet. Uh, sure, that's fine. That's fine. Maybe ignore these guys. Let's just maybe focus over here instead. So if we get you guys here and then you guys here, that's more three towers to take these ones on. There we go. Right, archers of course. Let's make sure you guys are on guard mode. You are. Okay. If we can get the towers then to focus on specific targets, like out of these, what do we have? Source warriors, source warriors, skinks. Skinks I'm not too concerned about, but focus on the cold ones for me. Or even the horned ones, that would be better. Okay, trebuchet, when you're ready, I want you to start firing on the temple guards. And you focus on that one, you focus on this one as well. And then what I'm going to do is just get the archers ready here to start pulling back straight away when needed. Okay, trebuchets when you're ready, fire. Forty-nine. Okay, really need more artillery before we can even consider trying to do this. 
But let's just get you guys straight off the battle thing now at this point. Okay. Towers, gates, there uh, towers, gates. The ladder's already at the gate, so that's expected. You guys are doing a good job against these. Let's get you guys to actually focus on this unit here. That's fine where it is. Okay, you guys continue focusing there. There's the next ones here. Well, I will get you guys now to pull back before they get too close. Yeah, here they come off the temple guards there. Let you guys continue focusing on taking them out. Okay, the horned ones have taken a lot of damage. That's fantastic to see. Alright, looks like the skinks are going to be trying to make their way up as well. Okay, give it a second and I'll bring these guys back as well. Okay. Let's get you guys back here too. I mean, don't get me wrong, we could probably fight the skinks, but if I had out my foot squires or something up there, but may as well. Wow, you guys really aren't running away, are you? Alright, well, that would do. Make your way off here as well. So here they come. The first units have already breached the walls. We've got two units of temple guard. You guys are firing away already. Okay. Given this, I might change my tactic. Let's grab you guys and bring you over to here. This then way, then we can charge through this way and deal with them. Right. There we go. You, you, you. Set up there. Aye. Okay, Temple Guard have charged in. How are they doing? Losing decisively. That's great news to see. Alright, what do we have coming up this way? Okay, that's fine. Extremely close. Focus over there instead. Alright, hang on in there, guys. Hang on in there. Where's my paladin? Let's get you to come in and try and support a bit. Okay, over here. Hornwinds are about to get smashed. He says, with some hesitation, as they charge in instead. Okay, archers here. Focus on the cold one riders instead. These are about to retreat anyway, so that's fine by me. Better yet, focus on... No, 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 stay where you are. Don't... Just stay where you are. Just stay where you are. Right. Let's get you guys to come here. You focus now on the units back here. Alright, so far so good. Alright, how are you guys hanging on? Losing decisively. That's not good. Alright, combat even. Hold one's coming in for round two. Okay, let's start bringing in the counter charge. So you guys going to come in here. Alright, let's get you guys here. We've got Source Warriors there, Skin Cohorts here, okay. You guys continue the fire. You focus on taking out these, I guess. Then you guys are going to bring around here. And I'm going to see if we can basically try and charge through the gap. Take out, push the Source Warriors back there. Oh wow, you've, you're already defeated. <laughs> okay. Harmonic Convergence, that's already kicked in, okay. Right. Saw a Spearman, that's maybe not charging just yet. Temple Guard are losing slightly, okay. Let's bring you guys up here now to attack. What do we have over here? Skinks? Red Crested Skinks, okay. Are you two... No, 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 push through, push through, push through. Right. Trebuchets have done a ton of damage there. It's great to see. Focus now over here instead. Peasant Bowmen are now t used up their ammunition. We're going to have you come over here. Right, how are you guys doing? You charge here. You guys charge here. Right. Let's get a unit of foot squires over here to support. Then you guys come in here. Then you knights. Get in position here. And again, we're going to try and push through and see about going after them, the skinks in the back there. 
Okay, knights have charged in. Got skinks and red crested skinks. These guys have got good armor piercing, but on the whole, they tend to be not that good. Again, said with some hesitation as we now see the unit are half strength. Right, let's get you guys to charge into the rear of these. Okay, units are starting to waver. Damn, that was a bad artillery shot. Okay, tell you what, you guys focus over here instead. Right, you guys push forward here. The two cavalry units that I had, let's get you guys back over here. Foot squires push forwards. Foot squires come and take these. I uh, continue pushing through this way. Okay. That's good news. That's really good news. Okay, Knight Evans, we're going to have you push in from this side. You guys are going to push through to attack the Skinks. Alright, how are we doing over here? I know they're a high threat target because of their spears. Not all that much I can try to do. Let's get Esteban. Where's Esteban, actually? He's over here, right. You push through. Knight Evans, I wanted you to... Push through, go and attack these. Esteban, go around the targets and go after Tetiako. See if we can do some damage to him. Alright, make your way around, make your way around. Okay, come around. Attack. Okay, okay. Alright, let's get. You guys pull back. I've already asked you to do that once and you haven't listened. Alright. Thank you, thank you. Make your way back over, back over. Right. Oh wow, gone are the days now where Knight Evans get defeated by bloody skinks of all things. Okay, that's fine. You guys charge, you charge into him now. You guys charge into the back here. There we go, they're routing. Victory. Okay. What I'm going to do now is chase after the enemy, kill as many of them as possible. So, see you guys back on the campaign map. So, don't believe the lies when the game tells me that I've got a Pyrrhic victory. We had much more men left over than they did. So, I'll take that as a proper win. Now, we didn't lose any units from the garrison. Not that it mattered, because we'll get them back anyway. But, we didn't actually do too badly. I was expected to go much worse given the amount of peasants we have under our control. But, I'll take it. We'll execute the captives. They can run off. Esteban has actually picked up Skink Skinner, which is really cool. Oh. Well, hopefully, the Hun Marshal's expedition can deal with that army. Although, hang on. Was that Mazamundi leading the army? Ooh, that might suck. <laughs> Right. Yeah, let's have a quick look. Uh, Skaven, sure. Yeah, Mazamundi's here. Crap. Well, on the plus side, he is heading towards the head of Marshall Expedition, so that's fine. They can deal with him. Fad, we'll set the target for him. Just in case they get any funny ideas about going after these guys. As for you, Restaban. To be honest, I'd much rather have the income right now, sorry to say. So, you can t be disbanded for now. Instead, we've got 13, nearly 14,000. We can actually now upgrade this so we can get our hands on damsels. That would be pretty cool. And I wanted to upgrade this so we can get our hands on Crested Knights as well. Perfect. Alright, let's upgrade... This while we're here? Do we want to do that? No, let's save it for the moment. Okay, Port Reaver, I could try and upgrade, but to be honest... No. What's the garrison like? It's not too bad. It, it might do okay. I don't know. What we'll do, just to help out, let's actually put... Esther back in here. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to recruit any uh, more supply units for her. Thing, but we could try and get these hands, like the Defenders of the Fleur de Lis. 
Um, in fact, just be to help out with the cavalry bit, I will recruit these two units. There we go, we'll take that. And then with you guys now, we're going to make our way down. So we're in a position to go after the monolith of fallen gods. We are going to take some attrition, but we're going to go and encamp. Perfect. And then that will be our final target, I think, going by the time for today's episode. So we're going to skip forward until the next turn. And then continue the fight then. Oh, wow. I forgot. It's that time of the campaign. Do I want to keep the 5,000 gold? To be honest, I think we'll be okay because if I go gifts to Petonia, I'll show you guys in just a moment, right? Pop through that. Uh, Kuryon, and to continue to get from these guys, because then we're seeing our favor increase and we'll get our hands on even better units. But you guys will notice that that Skeggy force is now gone. It's because Marcus Wolfhart sailed over and defeated them at sea. So it was really a bit pointless me recruiting these units. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to... Do I want to disband her though? I think I will for the moment. The thing is, as Batonians, if you want to... Really, you need to have a couple of lords upgraded, or at least have them so they got the Knight's Vow. Because otherwise it gets really expensive to, you know, maintain armies. So, I don't know. Part of me feels like we should maybe consider keeping a, a, a lord or two about. Just to try and start upgrading them to get their vows. Ooh. This one could actually be a little tougher. But you know what? It's near the end of the turn. I'm just going to go do this. We did lose the Squires, that's unfortunate. But we've taken another settlement. That is now under our control. And if we check our recruitment options. Oh, we've actually got Crested Knights. Another unit of these would be quite nice. But better yet, even though we lost the hunt the whatchamacallits, even though we lost the foot squires. In a few turns, we'll have access to Crested Knights on foot, which I think will be a much better option. So, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So, the Monolith of Fallen Gods. Let's have a look. Let's give you defenses as well. And then we're going to have to go after these two armies here. And then push down in order to deal with these. Although, like I said, I'm not that concerned about what happens with Hexotl, so we could... Start sailing across in the next turn to go after Grey Rock points and just finish off Skeggy completely. Yeah, that will be a much better option in my opinion. We'll let these guys rest up for now. That will get, by the time they come back then from taking out there, that will give Rosovo enough time to upgrade so we can get our hands on the Knights. It's going to take three turns. Yeah, that should work. That should work. Right, Lorenzo. Still can't remember why I had you originally. <laughs> um, yeah, virtually the idea. Fine, we'll make you into a combat character just to help out a bit. I know campaign agent will be better. Yeah, we'll go for that. Cause your vow, yeah, was for agent actions, right? I'm glad I went. I changed to go the right way. Okay, Lorenzo. Let's get you marching over back towards here, cause then we can start dealing with that. Looks like we've got Plague here at the High Sentinel as well. The lady wills it. Ugh. That's going to be an annoying fight to do. No matter though. Alright, let's start getting rid of the corruption and get a bit more control in the area. Christ, we're going to have another rebellion take place anyway. Ugh. Right. Who's missing a point? Oh, hang on. Spin this around. Can't stand it when the camera changes like this. Much better. Right. My strength and wisdom so, Hector... What was I working on with you originally? I was gonna give you... Let's go for that. On a better yet. Let's go for Deadly Onslaught. There we go. 
Can I actually give you any magical equipment? We can give the armor a fortune. Oh, we've actually got a few items. Okay, I'm going to give you the Kuas of Fortune because I feel as my faction leader, he should have... Oh no, he's got the Enchanted Shield anyway. Okay, never mind. Let's give you then the Armor of Fortune. And you can have the Dragon Bane Gem as well. There we go. I think that should do quite nicely. Right, we'll give you a Pit Fighter because why not? Right. Let's hit enter then. And assuming nothing bad happens, we'll bring the episode to an end then. Right. Well, any chance I actually had of attempting to do the battle has gone out the window, thanks to Grack turning up on his Wyvern, led with, with all of these. So I'm just going to accept the loss, unfortunately, then let them have it. We'll take it back off them once we've dealt with Skeggy. Don't you guys worry about that. Oh, a prosperous harvest. An unusually bountiful harvest has left us with a rare and excessive surplus. This can be distributed immediately or stored for the future. If we distribute it now, we get cheaper buildings for 10 turns. Or we get extra growth. To be honest, I'm going to go for the buildings. I think that would be much better for us. But I think now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to leave it here. So we've done quite a bit of good. We've pretty much eliminated Skeggy as a faction. We're just going to make our way up then to Greywalk Point to finish them off. And that should be done two turns. If we go by C, maybe three. I mean, it could, yeah, it'll take about five if we go up that way. So yeah, we'll head up towards Greywalk Point, take them out, come back down, clear up this, and then we'll head down then to deal with the Blue Vipers next time. In the meantime, then, we'll have to wait and see how the Hunt Master's Expedition gets on with dealing with Mazamundi here. And we do have this army back here that's managed to get another Slam Mage Priest, and we'll keep an eye on them as well. But let's end it here for now, guys. So, as always, though, thank you very much for watching today's episode. Hope you enjoy, and that you do join me next Wednesday for some more Warhammer. But until then, everybody, take care, stay safe. And goodbye for now.